Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and in this tutorial we're going to make this 3D printed box using the part design creating a bottom and top and a pin and creating this hinge to allow us to open and close this box and allow us to print it in situ. If you like this video please hit a like and also subscribe to the channel. I also have a Ko-Fi site where you can actually donate to my contributions to the community and that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0 so we're going to start with a new document and I'm going to go over to my part design and in here I'm going to create a new body and a new sketch I'm going to place it along the XY plane as usual so depending on the application depends on the size of the box also on the size of the hinges so something like a tackle box it's going to be quite large and robust so you need bigger hinges but we're going to go for a small box for the time being so I'm going to do a box that's something like 200 by 200 so a square box and also the same depth as well so we get a cube so I'm going to place the square in the screen let's give ourselves some space to work with let's full screen that there we go can make these two sides equal and then I'm going to set the length of this side I'm going to use the fixed horizontal distance and I'm going to make that 200 millimeters there we go so we've got a nice square there and I'm going to place it in centered in the middle so I'm going to click this one and this point of the top I'm going to use this center line here, the y axis, and when I hit the symmetrical constraint, we may get some over constraining in there. And it's saying we've over screened up, constrained over there, but the idea is to actually get that symmetrical to that line. And it's saying constraint 5, we've got a problem with. Now we can either go and find constraint 5 on here, or we can just click to select and then move down there's constraint 5 so that's a horizontal constraint we've got a problem with so let's delete that that's better and we're going to do the same on this side and I expect I'll get the same here with a vertical constraint so click those two and then the last one you will select is that X line that goes right across the center there and do a symmetrical constraint upon that line so again over constrained it's probably constraint constraint seven there. I click to select constraint seven's appeared. See constraint seven there? See it highlighted in green there as well. So you can see the constraint, that's the problem. So we're just gonna click on that and I'm gonna right click and delete or hit the delete key, delete that off. So that's gone green now, it's fully constrained. We're all good. Let's close that. And what I'm going to do is put some padding on there. So I'm going to pad this up by 200. So hit pad and hit 200. And actually, that's going to be the box, but we want half the box. So we want to work on half the box at a time. So we'll make this 100. Bit of a tip here. If you've got some obscure length in here and you don't want to do the maths, just place divide by two. So I'm dividing the box by two to get the two halves and hit OK and you get your 100 so once you go back in there you can see that's set to 100 now OK that now I like working with a draft plane so you can actually see what this is sitting on so I like looking at the axis cross so I need the toggle axis cross which is on view toggle axis so I know where that axis is right in the center there I'm going to pop over to the draft and what I need in the draft is the this plane here so that's enabled now now that's on here if I can get to it this one here so I can turn that off and on by that one there I believe it's also up on I believe it's utilities and toggle grid there if you don't see this plane if you don't see something small along here you can actually change that and if we go into 
edit preferences what you're looking for is the draft there's the draft and you're looking for grid and snapping and you're looking for grid size so let's have a look why snap grid shows so grid box grid size that's the one you want grid size so 1000 lines there so I bought this down hit OK you won't see nothing change until you jump back to one of the other workbenches that gives it time to refresh and you can see when I jump back to the draft that's refreshed now so I can jump back to the part design and we're good to go so that's my half a box sitting there. Next thing I want to do is hold out this box. Now there's two options, depending on what application this box has. If you want to hollow out and leave a wall that's the same size around this side, say it's a 200 millimeter box, so you wanted to leave a 10 millimeter wall going all the way around, then the easiest option is to click that top face and use the make a fix solid or part design and come to and dress up and use the thickness there and what that does is it doesn't look like it's done anything but if you add a bit of a angle to that you can see it's created thick walls so that's what thickness is it makes the walls thick maybe a bit confusing when you're looking for hollow but it's called thickness in FreeCAD, so it's made those walls thick. And I'm going to change this to 10 millimeters, so the thick thickness. See, the thickness has gone outwards, and it's rounded off this side. But I want it to go inwards. I want it, this to keep, still keep the shape. So what we do is just come down here and make thickness inwards. And that's placed that thickness inwards for us, like so. And then we can OK that. And we get the thickness here. If we didn't want that, what we can do is let's get rid of that. We can select this pad, and what we'll do is create a sketch upon that pad. And say we wanted this side a bit thicker than all the rest, so you couldn't do that with a thickness or a hollowing. So you would actually have to create a sketch on your pad and using your create an edge link to external geometry we'll go out to sketch sketch geometries external geometry you can import the points by just hovering over them see they light up there just click and those points import from the base geometry and this allows you to do constraints against them so I've done those I'm going to place a square inside here, like so. And I'm going to say that the front of this is going to be 10 millimeters. So I'm going to use those two points and use a height constraint in there, 10 millimeters, and also a width constraint. So selecting those two points, coming in and doing the width constraint of 10 millimeters so that's constrained that side this side is constrained it won't move up or down but it will move left and right so we need to constrain that one so click on that point and that point so those two and using the insert a length the width constraint you can see that's gone green now in the background use 10 millimeters so that line is constrained now so we also want to constrain the bottom as well so we come down to the bottom and we can make this bottom actually wider if we so desire so I'm going to go for 20 millimeter on here so I'm just going to use these two bottom points and do a height constraint on there of 20 millimeters we close that, that's all done, and then we use the pocket tool. 
which is in here, create a pocket or part design and go into the subtractive features and pocket and we want 90 in there because it's 100 so take off 10 10 millimeter thick wall and there you go so that's done so that's how you would do it with a pocket I don't want a thicker wall so I'm going to come back in I'll click on that sketch and I'm just going to change that to 10 mil and we can keep it at that so let's close that so back to basic square one, but this time with a pocket. So at this point, it may be that you want to duplicate this up to make the top, but you don't want to start doing that just yet. It's best to start on one side and finish one side and then use that as a mirror to the other side, because otherwise you can run into a few problems. So we're gonna start on the hinges for this side now. So I'm gonna create a hinge on this now depending on what the application of the box is, depends what type of hinge you want to create on there. So for instance, if this was a tackle box, I would use quite a chunky hinge because it's gonna go through quite a lot of abuse. It's gonna be taken outside, it's gonna be put in the back of the car, it's gonna be rolled about a lot, open and closed a lot. So we need something that's gonna stand up to abuse. If it's gonna be a small, ring box or jewelry box then it's going to be quite small and dainty hinge because it's only going to be open once or twice the ring taken out placed in the finger and placed them back into a bedroom drawer so you can get away with more discreet hinge on there you also got external and internal hinges and we're going to go for external hinge on here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in and click on the front and position myself so i'm in line here and this is where the hinge is going to sit. And I'm going to click on this face. So the face there. And that's the side of the box. And I'm going to create a new sketch. On there. So it's created a new sketch. And that should attach to that face. So we'll have a look at that. So that pocket. We've got a sketch. And that's on face 6. So that's on there. So the first thing I want to do is import this line here and this line here and perhaps this point so we can do some constraints to the side of our box. So if I come up to the create an edge link to external geometry and I'm going to import this side and this side. So we've got the two sides and the point imported. We're now going to create two circles in here. So come up to the circle. And our hinge is going to sit about around about here. So I'm going to create a circle. And I'm going to constrain this to about 10 millimeters. Come over. And the diameter of that is 10. And we're going to constrain another one inside that to around about 5 millimeters. So make a circle. Click on here, create another circle in here, hit escape, click on that circle and make that one 5mm. So come in here, diameter and 5mm. So that's good. We can move these constraints out of the way, so I'm going to perhaps move them up. So that's it now, let's get these constraints out of the way. Come over here. Matter of fact, let's come down and just hide those constraints so they're out of the way so we don't see them so that's all constrained now and I want to put a piece of construction geometry that connects it to this line here just to keep it away and I'm going to use the line tool and I've got my auto constraints on so if we come down auto constraints on that means that when I roll over that middle point that line is going to be constrained to here. Now this can be construction geometry, so don't worry. Click that point, and I'm going to click this point here as well. That creates that piece of construction geometry and keeps it in line with that. So if you think about it, if we take this part of the box, which is the bottom part of the box, duplicate it and put it on top, then our hinge will sit here in line with those two that I've closed. 
Now we need another line, so I'm going to escape that and click my line again. And we're going to place a line along here. But first I've forgotten to change this to construction geometry, so I click on that line. And we need to change that to construction geometry. Now there is an icon along here somewhere. There it is. So toggles the toolbar or selected geometry to from construction mode. Or well, we can get from that to sketch geometries and toggle construction geometry. When we click that, that turns blue. So that's construction geometry at the moment, so that doesn't have any effect on our padding or pocketing. Next thing I'm going to do is take this line tool and I can connect it because all the constraints on to this outer circle. I'm going to come down and connect it to the side of the box like so. And we're going to take this line and this line that goes along here, click on them and I'm going to put a constraint on there. And that's the angle constraint and I want that 45 degrees because it makes a nice strong angle for the hinge. Okay that. So now that's there. I can decide how far out this is going to sit. So I'm going to say I want it about be quite discreet so I'm going to come in and have it there. So now that's sitting there I can just put some constraints in here to keep it that far away. So 6.39 and I'm going to make it 7, so 7 millimeters away. So that's constrained nicely to there. Now we've got the shape of our hinge. If you think about it, this will be our hinge and when we pad, we'll pad this way. And we'll do it so many times along here that we will then flip this over and the hinges should fit in between each other. But we're jumping the gun there. Let's get this one done first. So I'm just going to click right again to center that. Now what I want to do is be able to pad this. But first we need to close this sketch up and trim it down to make it into a shape. So I'm going to use the line tool here and I'm going to connect to that point and connect to that point. So that's almost close that shape up. Saying it's over constrained, so let's click the constraint, come down and there it is. So we're just going to move that down. Just going to delete that constraint from there. So if it goes over constraint, just go and find it and delete it by using the click on click on the constraint and off you go. Now I want to place a line that connects this outer to that point there. We could use this line here, this geometry. Um, but I'm going to leave that there because that makes a nice constraint keeping this away. So I'm going to come in here and where these two connect there place the line on there and I'm going to connect it to that point. So it's connected there and connected to that point. I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to move over to the trim tool. So this one here, trim an edge, respect to the picked position, or go to sketch, sketch geometries and come down to the trim edge. And I'm looking at the edges to trim so I want to get rid of this edge here like so. You probably start to see the shape of what's actually happening now. So now we've got this I want to move this over here. So we've got these constraints along here. I'm just going to remove those constraints from this line that goes along here. Because what's going to happen when I pad this is going to go into error. So I try to pad that now there we go, it's gone into error. So I should have done this before, but I just wanted to show what actually causes the errors that you get with this kind of thing. This needs to be slightly over here for, to allow for the 
pad. So it's actually sitting on here. And what I'm going to do is I need to break that constraint. So click on that constraint because that's constraining it onto that line. Delete that. And we'll just move that over. And we need to do the same with this one here as well. So we can just click on that one and delete that and then just move that over. You can move that underlining underlying one there as well. So move that over and then connect those two up. Make sure that's positioned correctly. So I want that positioned there. And you can see where we need some more trimming in here. So around about there. So we need to take this line and make sure it's vertical. There we go. So that's all good. And I'm going to take this point and just make sure that there's a constraint between that point and that point there. No point three two and 0.5 so it just overlaps there now I can do some extra trimming in here because if we try to pad this it's going to go into error because of that there you can see that for close and pad it goes into error at this point in the video I forgot to explain the reason why it goes into error now if you looked at the sketch you notice that there was a point on object constraint rather than a point on point constraint and when you're padding sketches then that constraint if we move it we can actually move it off that line to create a space in there and that doesn't work in our sketches so we have to make a solid connection and I want this sitting on this line but let's trim that first so click on the trim tool just trim that out and then we can move hit escape and move this back down and then we can move hit escape and move this back down onto there and then we should be able to pad that there you go you can see the pads works there so I'm going to cancel that because we've still got some additional work to do in here with constraints and um, we've got this constraint going up and down so I don't like that so I'm going to click on that point and that line and just place that back on that line so that's nicely constrained now so we have a hinge ready to pad out. Let's close that. So that's sitting nicely there. And now we can start to pad this hinge. First of all, I'm going to come in to the sketch. And I'm going to rename that to hinge sketch. So we know what it is. And then just reset our view, ready to go. So with the hinge, we're going to just pad that and what we're going to look at is figuring out where that's going to pad to so it's padding forward at the moment so if I do 100 on there that's going to pad forward this way we could reverse it send it the other way we've got to figure out how many of these we want to go along here So I may do two on the bottom and two on the top and make sure they intersect each other. So I'm going to be looking at using one of the tools that are up here. So create a linear pattern feature with this as well. So our box is 200 millimeters. So I'll do the whole length of that box. And basically we want two hinges on each side so in all if the hinges are interconnected there will be four hinges so I'm going to do 200 divided by 4 in there and that will give me the size of the hinge now I may need a little bit of leeway between these hinges to allow for the movement in there but we're going to go for that for the time being and click OK so that's done now that's our pad done 
and that's sitting there. So what I can do, do a linear, create a linear pattern and feature. And we're looking at this pad, so I'm going to click on that pad, pad 001. Okay, that. And you can see it's duplicated up along this axis at the moment. And if I come down, what I can do is change the axis. So we want the same x axis is going this way. Let's try vertical axis, which vertical axis is along there. So normal sketch axis places it this way. And that's reverse the direction. So it's there. And we look at the length as well. So at the moment, there's 100 millimeters length there. If I did four, then you can see where that's placed it. They placed it together there. So if I change this to 200, I did four. You can see how they have moved along there. I've just put 22 in here. Bear with me, let me just change this back to two. And there we go, that's back to normal. If remember right, the length of our inch was 50 millimeters. So if we minus 50 off of here, obviously we can just place 150 in here or put minus 50 like so. That'll place it in place. So you can see how we can place these in the correct place. Now I'm thinking 100 millimeters will place it in the right position there. So what we've got now if there is a 50 millimeter gap between here. So we've got 50, 100, 150, 200. So what will happen is when we duplicate this up and flip it over, they should fit in between here. So we've got these two hinges actually fitting in between here. Now, depending on the hinge setup you want, you may want to do this differently. To make this stronger, you may want to have additional hinge here that connects up. And it's up to you, but I'm going for these two here. So that's okay that. Now we've got our linear pattern sitting there. We can test it by just collapsing the body down. And I'm just going to do a quick test. I'm going to click the body, go ahead, up to edit, duplicate selection. Okay, that. And I'm not going to worry about that. Let's get rid of that. So that's duplicated up the selection now. So we should have two bodies. So we've got body one and body two, which is sitting there. And I'm going to click on this body here. I'm going to transform. I'm just going to rotate it. So let's see if I can get the right handler here. So it's this green handler. Let's rotate this over. Like so. And transform it up. You can see how they connect there. Nicely. It's okay that minute and see the placement of body one. So this placement of 180, which is right, and the position is 200 millimeters up, which is correct. So we just need to place a pin through there. So you can see there, we just need to place a pin through there. And then basically we're almost done. We've got the two bodies and let's name them so we've got this one here, rename that, and that's the bottom. Rename this one as the top. So we've created our box, and we want to place a pin through here to keep this all together and allow it to hinge. Now, I'm going to print this in situ, which means with a 3D printer, I'm going to 
flip this over like so and have it printed this way with a pin that runs through here. So that means when I take over the 3D printer that pin will be all connected. I may want to back these hinges off a bit because I may want to stylize the pin that goes through here so I could have a bull end on, on here and to stop it from using extra dress up to push this up off the base then I might want to push this back and use that on there. But that's getting too far into it. I need to create the pin on here. Now what I'm going to do is click on the left so I can have a look at this. Yeah. Turn it around to the right. Click on right. And I'm going to create the pin as a new body. So come over here, create a new body. Now this is going to be for the pin. Let's give it a name. Now when I create the sketch, I don't want to create the sketch on the body, it's directly on this body. Because what will happen if I do new sketch there, and if I look at what plane I want to place it on, so the YZ plane, pick the YZ plane, what will happen is that our sketch is, you can see where our sketch is intersecting which is no good so that sketch will actually sit along along this plane here and I can show you that by placing just a square in here and you can see how that's intersected that's no good we don't want that so close that and get rid of that sketch and what I'm going to do is use a datum plane so what a datum plane allows us to do is well create a plane on here to, to sketch on and we reference the datum plane against this object so click on your body, important to do that, and click on the datum plane, and that will place the datum plane inside this pin. So we're inside that body, and we've got to select a edge. So I'm gonna come in, and I'm gonna select the circle around here, and select that. That places the datum plane on that circle, like so. And we can change the connections if we so desire. Place them in different points. Deactivated, normal to edge. You can see how they're being placed. Concentric, etc. That's fine, that, the way that's being placed is there. The reason why, so I'm going to cancel out there, the reason why I didn't place the datum plane and referenced this is because it's placed it down here. We can move this by using the X and Y. Not the Z we want to we'll move along the X. There we go. And along the Y. We can move it. But I don't want to do that. I want to actually just get it into position. So I'm going to cancel that that datum plane, didn't have to do that, but that's recreate again, so click on the pin, click on the datum plane, and then we'll position the datum plane along that circle edge there, like so. And we'll okay that, and we're gonna do a cross reference. So that datum plane sitting along there, along that edge, and now we can sketch upon there. So I'm going to create a new sketch. And you can see that that plane has now been placed in the correct position. I can come in here. And that's perfect. That's right in the center there. So I can actually constrain to that as well. Let's place a circle connected to all the auto constraints it's there and bring this up and I'm going to do about that much it's good close that so there's our circle there it jumps about a bit but that's okay and now we can pad that 
and I'm going to do it reverse. I'm going to do it two dimensions actually, so two dimensions. First length of about one millimeter has come out, so it pops out at the top. And the second length is 200. So if we just move this around, we can have a look and see it come out the, out the end. So second length, 200. You can see it popping out the end there. Let's do it 201. There we go, so that's popped out the end there. Okay, that. So that's our pin done. But it's gonna fall off. It's gonna fall out of there because it's hasn't got any heads on or anything. Now let's go back to this side and bring it around. What I'm gonna do is use the fits the selection content to the screen. That fixes our rotation then so we can rotate that nicely. Come in here and I'm gonna click that face and do a sketch on that face. So new sketch on that face and that's sitting there nicely. I'm just checking where that is. And I'm gonna place a circle on there, auto constrain it to the center, and I'm gonna come out just outside that, like so, and I'm gonna pad that up. Let's put some constraints on it actually so I get the idea of what the diameter is for the other side. So diameter on that. 5.7 millimeters. So I do 5.5. Okay, that. So that's good. Close that. And now we can pad that. It's padded that way. I want it to be dimensions. I could reverse it like so. Do that as one millimeter. Or 0 0.5 millimeters. And you can see how that's working there. So let's just bring that up a bit. There we go. So we've got a little rim on there. Okay, that, and do the same on the other side. So we know what our dimensions are. We know we've got to come in here, click that face. Don't need to that in plane because we're click clicking that face. Click the sketch, and just position ourselves. There we go. Click on the circle, and it was 5.5, .5, so that's all constraints there. Yeah, and bring this out like so. Hit escape, click on that, go to the diameter 5.5, .5. close that, and now we need to pad that. Let's come in and again click that and use the fit selection I need to zoom in anyway so there we go so just clicking that and just circling around that and we want to make this one 0.75 wasn't it 0.75 and do the reverse so there we go so that's our hinge done and that's position ourselves it's okay that pad before I forget and there we go so we've got a hinge going all the way through there and now we've got a nice hinged box 
Okay, now we've got this box all done. I want to open this up and I'm going to show you how to rotate it around this point. And for that, we're going to use the draft workbench, and there's a knack for this. And we'll show you how to do that. So, in the draft workbench, come in here. Now the reason why we're going to be using the draft workbench is that if we try to, if we go back to the part design, try to go back and click on the top and right click transform, then you notice that the handler is in the middle because we built the box around the center, the center of the sketch. And that's not a problem because that's dead in the center, which is fine. But being able to rotate that, you see this doesn't actually allow for rotation around this pin. And we may want to do that to have a look, see what's like inside. So I'm going to just come out of there, go into the draft. And in the draft workbench, we've got a number of tools. We've got this rotate tool. And this is the one we want. Now, what we have to be careful of is when we rotate, we don't want any, we don't want anything affecting the rotation. So you have to be careful of the placement of the rotation. And if I show you what happens, if I click on top, use the rotate tool and come in. And what rotate tool is allows you to select a point and rotate around that point. So I want to select the middle of this point here and then I want to click and I want to rotate like so. So that's opening and closing that rotation, that box around that rotation there. So you can see it's rotated there. Now there's a knack to using that tool. You see I just basically used it and it opened that box up. But you can see we've got a bit of a problem in that the rotation was off and it split the box like so, and you can see that it's off kilter. So we've it's opened the rotations opened it here, and that's because the draft is really for 2D, but it can be used for 3D as well. But if you think about when you're drafting, you're working with 2D shapes, so rotation is in 2D space. And what's happened is because we're working in 3D space, our rotation is slightly off, and the axis is not directly moving in a straight line towards us when we rotate. That's Control Z that and close that box back up. And there's a way around here. You click on left so you're nice and flat and now do it so we come in and use the rotation. Click there and I'm just going to click anywhere and start rotating this. You can see that's a much better rotation, but we've, we're slightly off as well. We're slightly off there because we haven't gone to the center point. We get a better rotation there. I hit escape, so put it back in. Now to get to that center point, we're going to use our tools here. Now, this is the snapping tools. We've got the snap lock at the moment. And normally what will happen is, by default, these are all selected like so, which is pretty useless. So first thing we need to do is unselect all of these like so. And we come in here and first we select the lock so it activates these tools and then we can pick the snap center snap special whatever which ones we want in here so I go for snap center this will actually snap to the center of the object so I select the rotate tool and you can see we've got centering happening here. So you can see because this is a separate body, see that little dot that appears? That's exactly what we want. So if I click there and click up, we should get a nice rotation now around that center. 
And you can see how that's rotating now. And zoom out. And we'll just open it up. And there we go. So that's made a nice rotation around that. Let's give us a bit more screen to work with. Full screen, there we go. And open the box. Let's just get rid of that plane. Working plane. There we go. So our box is open. Now I'll go through that again. So click on left so it's nice and flat. Zoom in. Make sure our snap center is selected, highlighted there. And we want to click on our object first. So the top, this has been highlighted top. Use the rotate tool. Or come up to draft in. And it's one of these, where is it? Uh, modifications, rotate. You see when we get close, you see that little white dot appear in the middle of here. Get to it so a little white dot appears and we click. See I've got the my crosshairs on that circle there, so this is the middle of that, that circle. If I came in here, will I still be able to do it? Yes I will. So clicking in there you still be able to do it as well. And we can just move that into position. Let's try it at a angle as well. So I've angled and I've got my top selected, use the rotate, and we can see that's appearing. Just give it some arbitrary angle. We don't have to worry about where we place this line, so just place that line there. And you can see because we haven't gone and clicked on left so it's flat, that's come out as an angle. So let's control that so that. And then we can use the rotate after selecting the top. Rotate, click on the center, click somewhere, and rotate this out. There we go. So that's our box opened up and ready to print. You may want to print it opened or shut. It's up to, totally up to you. So that's how to make a basic box with hinge using the part design, using the linear pattern tool for the hinges, and using a number of bodies there. One for the top, one for the bottom, and one for the pin. So I hope that's helped, and I'll see you again shortly. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to my site. And also I have a Ko-Fi site um, where you can actually donate a few pence or a few pounds, dollars, or whatever your currency is. And that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0. And there you'll be able to help me fund my site and all the money that I actually get from, any funds will actually get pushed back into the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing. I'll see you next time.